How cheap or expensive is life in Rwanda? In this three part video series, I'm going to give you the ultimate guide on the true cost of living right here in Rwanda. This is part one, we're going to talk about the cost of housing. In part two, I'm going to talk about the cost of transportation. And in part three, the cost of food. Kwa hadiye. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, my wonderful people. This video was inspired by one of my brand new Patreon, Debra, who asked me a question. Hey Theo, I'm an older woman planning to move to Rwanda around May 2021. My primary concern is finding housing at a reasonable cost. Well, Debra and all the other Debras around the world with similar questions, in this video, I'm going to talk about exactly that. How to find a house, house prices when you're renting or buying, and the utilities per month such as gas, water, electricity, and taxes. I will also address some of the other questions that I got from my other Patreons uh, who, uh, whom I consulted uh, before I recorded this video. If you would like to be part of my think tank and have your questions be answered during the next video, please consider supporting me on Patreon and becoming my support circle or become a hero Patreon and we could do a consultancy on Zoom. You can also just support me by subscribing to this channel and liking this video. If this video gets, uh, let's say, uh, 300 likes, um, I will do a live Q&A answering uh, all the questions uh, from everyone. Make sure to watch this video until the end where I will be sharing how I was able to find my house in one of Rwanda's most expensive and safest neighborhoods without being overcharged too much and paying a decent rent. Alright, reka dutangire. How to find a house. Finding a good house in a good neighborhood really determines your quality of life here in Rwanda and I think also everywhere around the world. It's worth the effort to really put in some extra time and even pay that extra money to find a house that you can call home. There are three main ways to find a house here in Rwanda. Number one is through a professional broker or as we like to call him here, Mukumishonare. Mukumishonare is a real estate broker agent, basically someone who can connect a house seeker to an available house. I call this broker professional because anyone in Rwanda can technically become a broker. There are no rules or regulation or qualifications at this point to my knowledge. So anyone who can get the job done calls themselves a broker. But there is a difference though. There is what I call a regular broker and a professional broker. A regular broker is anyone who can get the job done and a Professional broker is one who does it a bit in a more professional manner. And this is the one I'm talking about in this video. You can recognize a professional broker by two things. Their prices and their level of communication. They speak good English and they tend to over communicate like sharing their prices upfront. They usually work within a company and they don't charge you money for their transportation and they do a good follow up. In Chigali, this Professional brokers are usually people who are not from Rwanda or who have lived outside of Rwanda for a long time like I have Their service is usually good and they know exactly what people like who are not Rwandan locals However, they are not cheap compared to the other two options that I'm going to be mentioning soon Once you have agreed upon a price you will pay a commission to them uh, Ranking somewhere between 50% to a hundred percent of the rent or you can agree up upon a flat fee of $500 to $1,000 depending on the property. If you are buying, you pay them a commission of about 2 to 5% of the purchase price. There is some room for negotiation, but it's usually not very common. The second way to find a house is through Facebook groups or just mouth to mouth. If you have a bit more time or you just want to save some money, you can go through Facebook groups here in Rwanda and look for a house yourself. There are many Facebook groups. Please don't ask me which one I recommend because to me they are all the same and if, with a quick search you definitely find them. And in all groups usually these houses are posted by all these brokers. On this Facebook group is where you find most of these what I call regular brokers. These are usually Rwandan nationals. Their communication is a bit stiff if you don't understand Kenya Rwanda or don't understand how Rwandans communicate uh, in general. Their prices differ as well, but in general they are much cheaper than the, what I call the professional brokers. Everything is basically up to negotiation. Each listing on Facebook comes with a phone number of a broker 
you can call them and, and arrange a visit. They'll usually charge you a what they call an engagement fee, it's basically a visitation fee of about five to ten dollars for you to just see the house. You will notice that when they list the houses, they don't put the exact location because otherwise they'll be out of a job. Once you have agreed upon a price, you usually pay your commission of somewhere between 25% to 50% of the rent price to them. Or a flat fee of around $50. Again, this is all for negotiation, so it is up to you to uh, agree with this broker on how you pay and how much you pay him or her. The third way to find a house is definitely the cheapest but the most time consuming. It's simply just walking into your desired neighborhood that you would like to move in and just go around asking people. You can just knock on the gate, talk to the gate man or anyone who opens and just ask him if there are any available houses here. You'll be surprised how much information these gate people have. I did this also with my cousin and it was quite a fun experience just to get to know the local people here. And um, I did not find the house through that option but um, I will definitely try it next time when I'm moving also. However, be aware, it is not easy. Not everyone is as happy to see you when you're just knocking on the gate when they don't know you. And it's not easy to do with this chigali heat sun uh, all up in your face the whole time. It's not very common to do this in like in a gated community or this like a, a fancy neighborhoods. Um, it's usually more common in the smaller neighborhoods where all the houses are close to each other and where more local randoms live, I would say. All right, let's go to number two, house prices. The house prices differ uh, tremendously depending on what kind of house. There are houses here with your own compound, you know, with your own gate door. There are multiple houses within one compound or they are like apartments and um, all just room inside a house. And of course, it will depend if you want to take it furnished or unfurnished. But in general, there are around four categories of rent prices. Category A is a rent price between $500 to $2,000 a month. These are usually very nice houses in very good neighborhoods and you can easily get them furnished or unfurnished or just a combination of both. Also, most experts like to just rent a room inside one of these big houses for around $300 a month. If you're interested in a more detailed look into this type of houses, I would recommend checking out the Unapologetic Nomads YouTube channel. It's an African-American family who, who is uh, settling down right here in Kigali. They have visited many houses and shared all their experience on their YouTube channel. Category B are houses of around $150 to $500 a month, which are usually smaller houses or big houses, but outside of the city of Kigali. Category C is uh, small houses, which like to be called ghetto, and they're usually around $70 to $150. Category D are usually houses under $70 a month. These are what we call the true, true ghettos of Chigali. So remember, ghetto is here, not the ghetto we know in English, but it's, it's a small, like, studio kind of up apartment or house. But these houses are usually found in the more impoverished neighborhood, I would say. And uh, he is where you would find the majority of the local Rwandans living there. You will rarely find an expert living in a house under $70 here. And also when it comes to, to buying, prices range differently. Uh, on average, the houses here are between $40,000 to $250. It's rare to find a house above that. And again, everything's up for negotiation. And most people also don't like to buy actually a house that's already finished. They like to build their own house. It is still possible in Chigali, but not for a very long time, I think. The rules and regulations around building houses are becoming more stiff and more complex. And more expensive. All right, number three, utilities. It is good to know that all your utilities here are paid prepaid, meaning there's no automatic payment. You use it when it's done, you have to recharge it again. Starting with electricity, it is usually around 10 to 30 dollars, which you pay on this meter. You basically put on some cash and then you use it when it's, when it's done, you add some more cash. And then there's cooking gas. It's usually like a bottle that I buy for around $13 and I use it for three months or so. So it's like $4. But on, on average, people here spend around $3 to $15 a month on gas. And then there's water, also around $10 to $15 a month. There's what we call garbage tax. It's around $5 a month. And what we call take-on, it's like neighborhood security. 
two to five dollars a month. So all in all, you pay anywhere between twenty to seventy dollars a month in utilities, depending on your consumption, of course. Now, for homeowners, they also have to pay extra taxes. Two in specific. The one is called property tax and the building value tax. Property tax is the tax you pay on the plot of land that you own. This property tax is anywhere between 0 to 30 cents per square meter. It all depends on the location that you are and how developed it is. So let's say if you have like if you own a property in a forest where there's no electricity, no water, no pavement, anything, you might be paying zero taxes. But if you have a property in the what we call the CBT, the Chigali uh, what does CBT stand for again? Central Business District. Or anyway, if you have a plot in the middle of the city of Chigali where everything is all paved and all amenities are there, basically, you pay up to 25 to 30 cents per square meter. And then there is what we call building value tax. It's basically a tax that you pay based on the value of the house or the building that you have on your plot of land. This is 1% of the current market value of that house. This tax law is actually quite new. It was introduced in 2019 and it has been phased in until 2022. That's when people are going to start paying the actual 1%. In 2019, when it was introduced, the this tax was, was a quarter percent. In 2020, it was a half a percent. In 2021, it's going to be three quarters of a percent. And in 2022, we're going to be paying 1%. So let's do some quick math. Let's say you have a standard plot size of 300 square meters, 200 meters by 15 meters in Chigali, where the property tax is around 20 cents per square meter. The property tax is then, in this case, is around $60 a year, which is around $5 a month. Now, let's say you have an average house worth of $80,000. You will be paying a building value tax of $600 in 2021, which is around $50 a month, and $800 in 2022, which is around $67 a month. Assuming, of course, that the value of your house stays the same. These taxes are up for revision very soon. Make sure to stay subscribed and make sure to hit that bell notification so that I can update you whenever I post a new video and also about this subject as well. Until then, these are the current prices that apply to anyone who buys or builds a house uh, at this moment. So now that you know how to find the house and the basic cost of houses, let's, let's go into the Q&A questions that I got from my Patreons. Okay, first question that I got from Max. A house hunting videos idea. Outside settling. Okay, Max, I don't know if I get the question right. Uh, yes, outside sitting is important, but not too important I've seen here in Chigali at least. Um, so how noisy it is, I, I've realized that uh, noisy in Chigali is a very big deal. So if, if you are making noise, police will come uh, visit you real fast. Uh, neighbors like to tell on each other when it comes to making lots of noise. So it's usually not very noisy, I would say. And especially in this whole lockdown thing, no one is partying or making any kind of noise. Uh, walking distance to stores and restaurants. Well, uh, here we like to we have some some things we call boutiques. They are like little small shops, usually around the neighborhood. Uh, if you live in a more like posh neighborhood, usually there are not so many. You just have to go to a restaurant. But in the more average neighborhoods, I would say there are many of those that you can find. Next question from Brendan. Yes, so the taxes I've, I've, I've explained, um, can you lose your property if you fall behind? Well, the laws and the rules and the regulation around property are the same for foreigners and local randoms. So if you fall behind, I'm assuming you get some kind of like reminder and it builds up and you have to pay them. And if you cannot afford to pay them, well, I guess, like I said, it's the same rules for anyone from the locals or um, from expats or other foreigners. Um, I don't think you can lose it that easily because it's a big hassle to, to transfer land. But I think if you want to build or do something with it or transfer it to someone else, you have to pay those taxes first. Or you can, you can have the purchasing party pay those, of course, for you. Is there any correlation between where you live and the, what school your children have to attend? 
you know, there's no correlation. Of course, it's up to you to choose which school you attend and depending on which neighborhood you live in. Um, is rent paid monthly, yearly, or multi-yearly? Rent is here usually paid monthly, uh, like I said, because there are no automatic payments, so you have to make the payments every month by yourself. If you are renting some kind of like commercial building, it's common for you to pay like six months or a year of rent in advance. Final question from Deborah. Thank you for the suggestion for this video. I saw an apartment in Vision City that really fit. The so the reason why not a lot of government workers have moved in there is really because of the price. So Chigali, even though it's expensive for most local Rwandans, they have a lot of, if you have some money here in Rwanda, you have a lot of choices. So this house in uh, Vision City, if you have not been there, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it is very nice build houses in a gated community. Um, but for that same price, you can get like a very big compound with big land anywhere else here in Chigali. So most Rwandans are kind of hesitant to, to get into it. They, they, they don't feel the appeal immediately, but the younger generation or the international generation is feeling it more and more. Um, do you know the occupancy rate? The last time I read it was in, so in 20, beginning of this year or last year, it was around 60%. It might have changed because of this whole pandemic thing, but it was well occupied. What are the plans uh, to motivate people to move there? Well, other than lowering the price for uh, normal government officials, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not aware of any other plans at this point. At this point, uh, is there is there public transportation convenient located there? Public transportation there is not very conveniently located there, I must say. If you are here in Chigali, you can usually take like a motorbike easily or a taxi. Um, public transportation, I think it's coming, but it's not there yet. Um, has any thought been given to promote it as a place for expats? Mm. This question, I'm not sure. If anyone knows, uh, please uh, comment in the comment section below. Um, to my knowledge, not at all. All right, thank you for hanging in there. So now let me show you about my house. I live in a one bedroom apartment in a neighborhood called Nyarutaram. It is quiet, safe, and also expensive, mostly because also there are a lot of companies that are also uh, in this area. I live in a compound with three other houses which is quite cozy and fun sometimes but I don't have a big garden or anything to play in. Although Nyarutarame is one of the most expensive neighborhoods here in Rwanda it is not the reason why I picked it. I picked it because of three reasons. Number one it's close to my business. Number two it's close to my business. Number three it's affordable. The downside is because of these gates and companies it's quite boring sometimes so I only have like one neighbor to my left and that's it and um, so you then don't get to know you don't get the whole neighborhood feeling but for me it was all right uh, I picked it because it was also what I could afford at the time with my business uh, growing um, and it does the job I'm happy where I'm at so I negotiated a lot I paid around 10% of the rent when I moved in which was a uh, really low uh, looking back at it but back then I was uh, really negotiating hard because I was really broke my amenities I pay $150 a month for my one bedroom apartment. Electricity is around $7 a month. Water, I pay around $2.50. And for the cooking gas, I consume, like I said, around $4 a month, which is around $12 to $13 every three months. And then there's like community security, which is around $2 a month. And then there's garbage collection, which also around $2. And then Wi Fi which is $28 a month. All in all, per month, I'm paying around $200 for living here by myself. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about the cost of transportation and the cost of food here in Rwanda. Support me on Patreon for as low as a cappuccino and you can ask me questions and I'll take them with me in my next video. Or just subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a like. If we hit 300 likes, I will do a Q&A as soon as possible and answer all of your questions. Stay tuned, stay subscribed, stay fit. Muramuke.